Rodessa Jones is co-artistic director of the acclaimed San Francisco performance company Cultural Odyssey. She is an actress, teacher, director, writer, mother, sister, survivor. Jones is also the director of the award-winning Medea Project, Theater for Incarcerated Women and HIV Circle, which is a performance workshop designed to achieve personal and social transformation with incarcerated women and women living with HIV. Rodessa Jones brings her whole self to the moment and to her work. Her work is political, technical, healing, and humble. She appears to be accomplishing this all both with systematically oppressed and resilient communities and in unconventional spaces. Well, I always tell people it's performance and theater saved my life. It was like uh, my mother had been a gospel singer, you know. Um, my grandmother was an amazing storyteller. It was how we were raised with parables, and um, and then uh, we lived in the up, we lived in the country in upstate New York before my mother and father had been migrant workers, and then they found this great old farmhouse mm -hmm. and uh, took us to upstate New York so that we would have a better education than they they had ever dreamed that they could have. And you know, I am a product of. The, the women's movement in a lot of ways. I'm the product of a huge family. I always tell people, crowds don't bother me. I, I was born into an army. I had 12 brothers and sisters. And my mother had 19 pregnancies and 12 of us lived. Mm. So, mm. you know, all of this was, and she was powerful, my mother. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, loving. She could crack you across the butt with a belt or with a switch, and then she would tell you why, and then she would give you a big kiss right on your forehead. It was like mm. all in like bam, bam, bam. It's like it's breathless. It leave you breathless. Right. And I and I think all that was a part of my DNA. And that time I was I just turned 30 yeah mm. when uh, my daughter had just gotten a scholarship to a very private school in Marin Academy mm -hmm. in Marin and uh, her father flaked her father had promised that he would uh, pay all the incidentals because she had a full scholarship he didn't and I mm -hmm. thought you know what she's gonna and the uh, social services uh, told me I couldn't have this and my daughter couldn't have the scholarship because we were on we were on welfare you know, and they, AFDC, AIDS to depend the families, and he said I couldn't have the scholarship because it was too much money. And I'm like, you've got to be out of your mind. You've right. got to be out of your mind. So I said, you know, take your, your welfare, shove it up your ass, I'm out of here. And uh, he said, well, you know, this isn't fair to your daughter. I said, it isn't fair to my daughter that she's got to be on the dole for the rest of her life because she's poor and an opportunity like this we have to pass up. And so I dance downtown, man. I dance sometimes two shifts, which was about $100 in those days. And uh, it was, a, in those days, that's what dancers did, because we had bodies. Mm -hmm. So North Beach, they weren't hiring black girls. Mm -hmm. But the Tenderloin, they were hiring black women. And the club was set up and run by lesbians. Mm. So it was a very interesting time. And uh, yeah, and it was financially, it made sense just yeah. to, that we could, then I could dance, you know, I could still, uh, I didn't have to be a waitress. Yeah, it's because I, I, I tell you, the downside was I was raped by somebody I knew mm -hmm. because uh, I said to go, you know, I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the police. And he said, I'll just tell the police that I picked you up at a peep show. Mm. So it was like, boom, but it, right. it was, uh, I survived, you know, I, I mean, I just, yeah. And I kept thinking, I just can't let my kid. It was such a tumultuous time because at that time, the, all these uh, women were showing up in Tilden Park and Oakland dead. Mm. And this guy might have been a part oh, of right, it, right. you know. And it was like, but I said, my, my daughter cannot wake up tomorrow morning and I'm not there. And then by nightfall, mm -hmm. she, the police find me and I, and I said, I'll do whatever, whatever I have to to live, to mm. stay alive. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, 
the, the men in my family, my brother, I had two brothers who were cops. Oh. And they were like, what were you doing that this man would, you know, that was the whole thing. It was wild, just oh. wild. And all of that, I think, sort of brought me to working with incarcerated women. Just this understanding of the, the light and the dark shadows of a woman's life, you know, and you're trying to live a contemporary life. You're trying to li live um, a solitary life. Mm -hmm. You're trying to be powerful and strong and... Uh, <laughs> The society just doesn't know what to right. do with you, yeah, and uh, and uh, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't they don't like us if we're you know. It's better, but it used to be awful if you were you had an opinion. You know, it mm -hmm. was uh, speaking out for yourself. It was it was very very different, yeah. And I got I started getting offers from uh, funding agencies to to go into the schools. I got, I was a seed artist for three years. Mm. And uh, this was, this was even after I danced nude downtown. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, okay. and uh, and I would, and also while I was dancing nude downtown, I was still working in the schools, like towards the end of that whole, my whole nude career. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so it was all, it was all like building. It was, it was all okay. happening, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I got a call about from the neighborhood arts program here in San Francisco, and they were wondering, was would I be interested in going into the city jail and teach aerobics to incarcerated women? I went in, and bam, it was just so many women were in lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I I had a brother who was at Attica when Attica fell when the wow. insurrection. My brother Richard was there. Wow. But I was not prepared for so many women being in lockdown. But then it totally made sense with crack cocaine coming in. This is like the the end of the eighties. Mm -hmm. And uh and women were just like arrested one because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. If you were there with the guy, boom, it happened. Women were also getting addicted sure. to crack cocaine, uh, as a way to to be in love, to, you know, mm -hmm. To be desired, to be wanted. I th I think uh, I had. I, I, they told me a lot when I went down there. And the she was sitting there in jail for two weeks. Wow. With no, she had no idea about what to do, and nobody was doing anything. Mm -hmm. And she told me what happened, and I was like, Wow, you should at least get a phone call. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it, gradually, we were able to get disentangle her and get her out, but it was like part of my education about what was happening here versus why are some women bad and why are people, women not? Why can't women keep their asses off the street? It was like, oh, it's deeper than that, you know, it's much deeper than that. So, um, and I was then I was hooked. It was like, what? But then they didn't want to do aerobics. They really wanted right. to do stories. They wanted to. Because I did stories. I did stories to get their attention. I did stories. I did, I did my most exotic uh, physical feats, walkovers, no handed cartwheels, because I could do all that stuff then. Okay. I talked about my daughter uh, getting married and being a grandmother, and, um, and they just were amazed mm -hmm. that I was, I was so open and that I was so healthy and so powerful, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't about telling them what they couldn't do. And, they, and this one young woman said, why are you telling us your business? Because with African Americans, this was very important. You keep it all in house. And of course, we need a lot of therapy because it's, we shouldn't keep it all in house. Right. <laughs> but she said, why do you tell us your business? I said, well, I said, uh, I'm interested in how we can build a bridge out of here so that you can go home, your children, your families. I said, even let's dream. Maybe we can be able to shut jails down. Mm. And she said, well, then you're not the police. And I said, no. Mm. And, she, and, she, and I said, I'm an artist. And she said, what's that? And I've been trying to answer it ever since. Mm. What is an artist in that space? Said, because they start, everybody started coming. The women just started. And they asked me, could they talk? Could we talk? Mm. And uh, what they wanted to—they wanted to share their stories, mm. and uh, and thus it started to grow. So, well, I made a piece entitled "Big Butt Girls, Hard Headed Women," which grew out of these conversations about uh, where they've been, where they want to go, what's happened to them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then after "Big Butt Girls" happened, the world opened in a different way.